Make some noise, First Wednesday Rowdy Crowd. You made it to church, and I'm so glad you're here today. If we haven't met yet, I'm Pastor Peter Haas, and of course, uh, my wife and I, Carolyn and I, planted this church a little over 17 years ago already. It's crazy. 17 years. I, we, we planted with an organization called The Ark, which you know has plant, planted 1,031 churches already. And just to kind of give you guys perspective, um, our church was Ark Church Plant number 15. You see, we snuck in before they had standards. You know what I mean? Thank God they didn't have standards back then because I wouldn't have made it. Now, I honestly, uh, honestly, so we were Ark Church Plant number 15. The interview was barely an interview. It was basically eating, like, barbecue, and then if they liked you, they just said, yeah, you're in. You know, no, it was actually, no, they, honestly, it was, it was kind of a scary thing, uh, planting. Many of you guys know I pastored a church um, before this, and we resigned it to start from scratch. And I, I'll never forget, you know, I, I had no idea how it was going to go. And, of course, you know, like, like most churches, we, we started out kind of with a, a good audience, and then we shrunk it all the way down to 60-something, and then... I, and then we slowly grew it back up to 102, and then we stayed at 102 for several years straight. Some months we averaged 103, you know, like when people had a baby. And then, uh, and then uh, we shrunk down to, you know, 95, but we didn't count that week because then we just hurried and, and won souls until we hit 102. No, we got, we got stuck at 102 for several years, and I'll never forget, I, I would come to um, art conferences, and I'd meet people like Pastor Dino Rizzo, who is in the house tonight. And, uh, and he was always giving me CPR. And I'll, I'll never forget, there was one conference where it was about two years in, three years in. And uh, I came up to Dino. And you have to understand, Dino, like, you were like a hero that was like a whole nother level. You know, like, it was almost like scary. I was like the guy that was like four people back waiting to talk to you. And I think I, it's actually embarrassing now that I think about it. Like, what I said, I think I came up to you and I just started whimpering, like, I don't have any mentors. <laughs> you know, like, just like this, like this depressed, you know, like, I, I don't even, I, I actually feel kind of embarrassed now that I, I look back. And... And and because you literally had a couple other pastors who were there, and I'm like kind of whimpering, like I need mentors. And tr truth be told, I I was so isolated at the time, and I I thought actually I kind of made the wrong decision. And you're like, oh Peter, you didn't make the wrong decision. And then you shared all these like depressing stories about your church that encouraged me. And it was like, and and, and get this, okay? And, and and he said, well we'll 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 mentor you. You're family now. And. You know, I, I thought it would kind of end that way, and I went home, and I came back here, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I got this invitation from Dino to go preach at his church on a Wednesday night, and I'm like, I, I literally ran around the house like a little kid, was like, oh my gosh, Dino Rizzo asked me to preach at his church, and I was like, baby, this is the largest church I've ever spoken at, and like, they literally, you guys flew us, I don't even know if you remember this, but you flew us down. And I preached at your service, and Delan, you took Carolyn out shopping, and, and we, we walked away like we had never felt like, like adopted quite like that before. And I, I just, you know, and if, if I could just have uh, Pastor Dino coming up here real quick, I, I just, he's in the house, and there are, there are very few people that like I, like I, there's very few people that I would call my pastor, and I reserve that expression for a very, very small group of people. Uh, pastor Greg Surratt is one of my pastors. Um, pastor Chris Hodges is my pastor, but um, you're the other person that I would actually say that about, and I want you to know you resurrected my faith so many times over the years. I cannot tell you how many times my heart was almost stopped, and you gave me CPR, uh, either one-on-one -on -one or through your messages. And my church, I, I, I want you to know that my church is a result of your fruitfulness. I feel like I'm a spiritual son of you and Delan. And I just, I want to honor you guys. And I want to, I just want to thank you guys for believing in me um, in the early days and just encouraging me all the way along. And so would you guys, as Pastor Dino comes to bring the word, would you stand to your feet and give a warm, substance welcome to one of my pastors, Dino Rizzo. 
great job. Awesome. Wow, wow. Come on, let's give God all the glory. Oh, it's all about Jesus. Come on, it's all about Jesus. 100%. Thank you so much. You be seated. Thank you so much, Pastor. And What an honor it is for Delenn and I to be here. We're grateful to open up God's Word. What a great night. My goodness gracious. What an experience that we've already had just being together. And you could just sense the presence of God. And, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an experience. It's an encounter uh, that we're all having together. And thank, can we clap hands for the worship team? They did a great job. And my goodness gracious. I know I needed it. My wife and I, we needed it. And we're, we're like, man, I'm just looking forward to it. I really love this church and thank God for it. And all the locations, of course, all the uniqueness that you have in your expression here. And just the heart for people. I just love being around people that are the real deal. Walking through the hallways, greeting people beforehand. You're just kind people. I mean, you just, you act like you want, I'm going home tonight with y'all. Y'all just, come on, sit on your couch. Get up in your refrigerator. Wouldn't even mind. I like people like that. You don't have to have permission to get up in the refrigerator. You know what I'm talking about? Go and use the toilet. We don't care. I like those kind of people. And that's Minnesota people. And so uh, just grateful to be here, grateful to be in sub. So you got a great team here, of course, at all of your locations. And, of course, the team here that's doing it. Just extraordinary people. So I thank God for the team and some of the team here. I know Nate and I spend a lot of time together. So we bring you greetings from Birmingham. My wife and I, we planted a church in Louisiana. We pastored it for 20 years, had a great time, relocated to Birmingham, Alabama. Get to be a part of a great church like this, Church of the Highlands. That's seeing a lot of people baptized, helping people uh, take next steps, seeing people come to Christ. And, and then, of course, with Ark, all the, the part that you play in those 1,031 churches that we planted together. Uh, you, and you've had really had a part on most of those. And so every time that you're faithful in your tithe and offering, when you go online to give, when you text to give, when you bring your offering, and you're consistent with your tithe, and you make your tithe a priority, uh, the team here, the integrity of this house, is distributing that out to start new churches and also to do a work around the world, reaching people through missions. And so just so grateful for that. You play a huge role in that, of course, your pastors do. Don't you thank God for Pastor Peter and Carolina Haas? Come on. They're the real deal. Carolyn is something else. She, hey, they can both preach. You know what I'm talking about? You got, a, you, you got double preaching right there with, with uh, the Haases, And I just thank God for them, all that they do. And they have a, not only a role here in what they do here, but domestically with planting churches. They're on our lead team. And they are just global ambassadors. Uh, just for Christ and so often things that are going on around the world we involve them to help us with their with the wisdom and the strategy and uh, and I just thank God for them uh, in their leadership and all that they're doing they got a great family they love God they love you you're not around them much and don't realize how much they love you and so when God gives you the gift of pastors like you have that love you love God love people uh, authentic uh, he has given you a gift from God and so you just pray for them, and I know God is going to continue to use them around the world. And even like today, we were before service meeting with a bunch of pastors and leaders. That just comes out of the generosity of your pastor's heart, really the generosity of substance. And so uh, we just love it here. Delinda and I got my wife with me. We've been married 33 years. Delinda, what you stand? It's my girl right here. She Cajun. She Louisiana girl. She ain't playing with y'all. She ain't playing with y'all. That's a strong woman right there. I'm telling you right now, strong woman. And I, the best Christian I know is my wife. We have three children, and they're older now. They're getting older. So we're starting to have a little bit of an empty nest, uh, which is kind of fun uh, at some level. Our son still lives with us, and they all show up at my house all the time. I try to run them off, but they show back up at the house. And so, Delenn, I are honored to be here. And, you know, you're a part of a great thing. I love a church that gives people a pathway. I think that's so important. Uh, the church is not a maze at substance. You can jump on a, a next step. That they'll give you a pathway like a growth track or you can join a team. You don't have to know some secret handshake to join a team. Uh, they'll give you a small group. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a small group. I thank God for the small groups that substance has available to you. Because these are, these are days that we live in that the world needs 
Jesus. And all the big ways that you do that through generosity, but even the daily ways that you do that. I, I'm so excited about how much you're involved with grocery give giveaway. There is such a food shortage among hurting people today, and you're on the front lines of that in this region, which I just can't say enough about. That is super important right now. And then Easter's right around the corner. What a great time to be able to reach people. People are looking for a new beginning. They're looking for a fresh start, and Resurrection Sunday is about that. So hopefully you'll make sure you're at one of the services and you'll invite people to come out. So I want to talk for a few minutes kind of around that idea, that thought of the season that we're in. People are hungry for God. And I want to talk for a few minutes around the thought of come and see, a come and see confidence, a, a come and see confidence. And so let's talk about that. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you for what you're doing, the generosity of this house, expanding the gospel. Lord, help us to make a difference. Thank you for Every person here, every individual, every single mom, every single dad, every blended family, every single person, they matter to you. We lean in, Lord, so speak to us and help us tonight. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, everybody said a good amen. amen. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I'm so glad you made it to church. Come on, look at the other person that was your second choice. And tell them, you look like you could use a little first Wednesday, my friend. My friend. That's how we say it down south, my friend. I, I want to read a, a very simple scripture that's the meat of the message out of the book of John, which I believe shows us the simplest way to change the world that you and I are living in right now. I believe changing the world, changing the dynamic of our individual worlds, our community is not as complicated or not as scary as we think it is. I think it's important for us to have the right confidence and the right mentality as we head into the, the Good Friday, as we head into Sunday, we head into so many environments that are going to give people an opportunity to say yes to Jesus Christ. And I believe this passage of Scripture uh, gives us that strategy it gives us that thought and I'm going to read that scripture then I'm going to read three other little short ones we would call that down south I'm going to give you a little meat and three come on somebody a little meat and three and so John chapter 1 verse 35 I'll read several uh, portions of scripture here throughout the end of this chapter on the next day John was there again with his two disciples when he saw Jesus passing by he said look the Lamb of God when the two disciples heard him say this they followed Jesus turning around Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And I love these words of Jesus. Come, he replied, and you will see. Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent uh, the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. I like that detail. Uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said, who had followed Jesus, the first thing, everybody say the first thing. The first thing Andrew did, not thought about, not just uh, uh, pondered on, he went and did something, was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him, he brought him, he carried him, he led him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of Jonah. Uh, you will be called Cephas, for which is translated Peter. What a moment of transformation. The next day, Jesus decided to leave from Galilee. Finding Peter, or finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathaniel. Look at these dominoes. Look at how this thing's linking together. F Peter, Philip found Nathaniel and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel said, Really? There's no way anything good would come from that part of the town, would come from those people. I mean, it was amazing how Nathaniel, he just rude, you know what I'm talking about? Just rude and just pushed away. But Jesus, but, 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 but I love what his response, 
Uh, he says, come and see, said Philip. You just come and see for yourself. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there's no deceit. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus said, I saw you. I saw you. I saw you. He sees people before we see them. I saw you while you were still. Oh, thank God that he saw us while we were still sinners. And he saw us when we were still depressed. And he saw us when we were still addicted. And he saw us when we were still doubters. He saw us when we were still heathens. He saw us while we were still. He said, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree. Way before Philip called you. Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. These last two verses, Jesus asked, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very, very, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open. The angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You will see the bridge. You will see the road map. You will see the ladder between the eternal and the temporary. I will do I will, You will see some things that no other people will see. Come on. Come on. All because someone brought somebody to Jesus. I love this passage. I think there's so much for us. We'll look at 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 through 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, watch this church, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Says there are lost people that are blind, but we're believing God that the light is going to shine on them. The glorious gospel is going to shine upon them. And we know this landmark. Uh, verse in John chapter 3 verse 16 Henry Barclay said that this should be everybody's favorite verse for God so loved the world that he gave us one and only son that whoever not a certain person not a certain group not the perfect but whoever whoever means anybody that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life I'll finish reading out of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 21. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on a few people. I will pour out my spirit on a certain people. I will pour out my spirit on really good people. I will pour out my spirit on those who really get it right. Educated people, intellectual people, the, the proper people. No, no, no. The Bible says that in the last days, the Spirit is going to be poured out on all people. How many knows all means all? And it says that and your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on your servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days and they will prophesy and I love, love, love verse 21. This is an Easter verse. This is a promise to believe for our neighborhood, our co-workers, those that are away from God. Because the Bible says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone means everyone. That means that all kinds of people can be saved. People that we don't think can be saved. People that are different than us. People that are far gone from us. People that are in different situations from us. That God Almighty can save to the uttermost. Can I have a good amen for God's word? I love these scriptures. It encourages me. It makes me realize that all people need God. Everybody needs Jesus. I was not brought up as a Christian. 18 years old, I was uninterested. I was uninvolved. I was ignorant. I was unaffiliated. I was undone. I was lost. I was wondering. I was distant from God and church. Uh, I, was, I was blind, as Corinthians says. And, 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 and I really believe this, and I, I believe this with all my heart. Uh, it was not because I was wicked. I don't believe it was because I was vile. I was evil. I was, I was a deviant. It wasn't because I was like hideous. He's so hideous. 
No, no, I wasn't like a viper, just, I wasn't like a cobra. So heathen. I wasn't walking around just cobra kai, just venom. I didn't have horns. I wasn't worshiping the devil. I was lost. I was blind. I believe, just like me, that most people in the world, most people we work with, most people in our neighborhood, most people in our trailer park, most people in our apartment complex, I believe most people, with, I think all, with all of my heart, that most people, are, they're, they're just blind. They, they, just, they just don't know how to get there. They don't know anything. They've just not seen. I don't believe they're all vipers. They're just all devil worshipers. I don't believe they're casting spells on the church. They're just, you just get around them and just, it's like Darth Vader. I do not believe that about the majority of mankind. I believe they're blind. They can't see. They don't know what to do. So I, my, my, I don't have a problem sleeping. I can sleep. Brother old, I go sleep on the stage right in front of y'all. I ain't got no shame. I don't need help sleeping in this stage of my life. I sleep all the time. I fall asleep everywhere. I fall asleep on planes like a mamma jam. I just fall. Every plane I get in, I'll fall asleep. And I snore. I snore on a plane. Other day, a lady stopped me. She's tapping me on my shoulder. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm out. I'm... Yes, man. She said, you were snoring. What you want me to do about that? I'm, I'm old. I'm old. I can sleep. So I have never used one of these sleep masks. Well, my daughter does. Bella does. And uh, it, it's scary. Sometimes I'll walk in a room, I'll Bella, and she'll get it with a sleep mask on. It's like, ah! <laughs> Here's what I believe with all of my heart, that at 18 years old, I believe I, w I was more like this. I, I didn't know what to do. I, I wasn't evil. I don't think I was wicked. I just, I didn't. Get your life right. Where? Get, get, get your act together. I don't know where to go. Quit. Why, why are you addicted? That's all I know. Why are you acting that way? Because I can't see any other way. Why are you responding like that? Because I'm, I'm blind. I can't see. I believe that is the majority of humanity in your family, in your neighborhood, in your city, waiting for someone to bring them. Because they're blind. I don't believe I was lost, wicked, evil. I was blinded. Yeah. Right. Guess what happened? Jesus was, had done everything he could for me to see. There was nothing else that Jesus could do. He had went to the cross. He had purchased my sins. So I had to be introduced to Jesus by his people. Because I was blind by his loving, caring, inviting people. Jesus had died for me on the cross. And Jesus made a, a way for me. But people had to build the bridge. And as they built the bridge through serving and loving and doing an outreach and having a conversation. My sister, when they told me, I'm praying for you. I'll never forget a senior in high school. I was, right when I was getting to graduate, looked at me and said, man, I'll tell you what, if you ever need anything, you come to church with me. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. What were they doing? They were building a bridge to me. Did, a church did an outreach, building a bridge to me. I'm blind. I don't know where to go. Yeah. And as they were building a bridge through serving and through giving and churches that were tithing and people that were praying and all these things that were happening, as they were building the bridge to me, eventually the bridge got to me. And guess what happened? Jesus walked across the bridge. He had done everything possible so that I could go to the other side, so that I could have forgiveness, I could experience salvation, I could find healing, I could find restoration. But it was God's people that brought me, that, that built that bridge so that I could walk across that bridge. 
See, that's the amazing privilege we get to do. We get to be a part of that through an outreach, through our generosity, through giving, through caring. There's some simple ways I really believe to change the world. I believe they're not as hard as we think. I think people are hungry. I think you have to approach life in a way that there are two types of people. There are those that are Christians, and then there are those that are not yet Christians. And so much of what we do at Substance is for those that are not yet here. But we're believing we're going to open another campus. We're believing we're going to do a conference. We're believing we're going to give out groceries. We're believing that we're going to expand our small groups. We're believing that we're going to go into another part of our community. Why? We're believing because we believe that those that are not yet here will be here. And, and we're just trying to build a bridge through our words and through our acts and through our kindness and through our love and through our preaching and through our, our, uh, the way that we're our example of living our life. And we believe as we build these bridges through planting churches and through digging wells and through being able to give scripture to people, all these different ways together as the family. We're building bridges. We're building bridges. We believe by faith and we have confidence that Jesus is going to walk across that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we're going to tell people like we see in John 1, come and see. But there's no way. There's no way anything good will come out of that. Come and see. Come and see. Because yeah. remember, he sees them before. Yeah. While they were That's still. Right. That's right. That's right. And we've got to see people that way. Yeah. Yeah. We, gotta see, we gotta see lost, broken humanity that way. Yeah. And I'm grateful that Jesus saw me that way. Yeah. So my goodness, I I was lost. I would, how, many, how many are here in church five years ago you'd have never thought you'd be in church? We, okay, actually, then in here, we'd start a small group. Yeah. How many ten years ago you ran with some people that would not even believe you in church right now? How many got some people you could shock right now? I'm talking about some, some people you used to run with. That they saw you now. Up in here worshiping. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, there's some people you ran with yeah, you know that will look at you and think, what? <laughs> and look what the Lord did. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm, I want to help. I'm going to give you some applications because I think Easter's super huge. Yeah. And it's amazing to me in the world that we're living in right now. I believe the window of people's hearts is a little bit more open. I believe the door's cracked a little bit more. We see in Ukraine, COVID, the world. I think the door's cracked, Pastor Peter, a little bit more. Yeah. And so you and I, I'm believing for the next few days that we're going to build bridges through loving people, caring, understanding their dynamic, not yeah. looking at them and saying, it's so wicked, they're just wicked. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they don't know what to do. Yeah. With that heart that uh, God's going to help us Build bridges, and, and so I'm going to give you four of them. They're application, and I think God's going to help them uh, with this. Here, here's the first one. Uh, the first one is that I believe God's called us to point people to Jesus. So how do I do that? You point people to Jesus. We are pointers. Don't We're not pointing them to ourselves. We're just pointing people to Jesus. It's just... It, it, it just come see, right? He's Jesus. Yeah. Just Jesus. Yeah. Other day I was in uh, Atlanta and we got there late. And I was with a friend of mine, another pastor. We stopped at a restaurant and we were eating a quick meal. And there's some people beside us. They loud. Oh, they get a little birthday party. Get real loud. They real, I mean, they loud and lit. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They loud and lit. <laughs> and man, they loud and we're eating. No, it was time to have our little meal. They loud, getting all loud. I mean, they, it's, it's Margaritaville. Come on, somebody. I mean, they, and, and they're having a birthday party. And all of a sudden, they came over and said, we're so sorry. We're so loud. We're just so sorry. We know we're bothering y'all. We're so loud. And, you know, and I just said, man, that's fine. That's awesome. Great. She said, I said, we're good. We're blessed. And it was two girls and there were some other people over here. And she said, oh, I feel a good energy right here. 
That's some good energy. I said, man, yeah, glory to God, amen. I just was, amen. She said, what's your sign? I said, Jesus. She said, I mean, when were you born? I said, I was born in July. She said, you cancer. I said, no, I rebuked that. I'm Jesus. She said, y'all, that's so, you know, they, they did not know. I just said, it's Jesus. She said, oh, I know. I, he helps me. He's helping me. I didn't look up and say, no, he's not. Y'all all going to hell. Y'all lit. You're loud. You got margaritas everywhere. And especially the one having the birthday. Judgment upon her. She ain't never going to have another birthday. She'll never see another day. I just pointed them to Jesus and tried to say his name as many times as I could. Love y'all. God bless. Jesus loves you. Jesus, Jesus. See y'all later. Hope y'all get home. Glory to God. We are pointers. How do I witness? How do I make a difference? Everybody's so skeptic. There's such a debate. Come and see. I can't save nobody. I can't fix nobody. But I'm point of to Jesus. I can live my, my life. My words can be a pointer. Here's the second thing that I think is super important right now with this come and see. Is hey, how about this? We can, we can bring people to Jesus. Be a bringer. Live a very inviting life. Keep inviting people. I mean, I think the statistic, Pastor Nate, is like zillions of people would come to substance. I think the number is zillion if they were just invited to church. Just had a church invite. Invite them to a small group. Invite them for a coffee. Invite them to experience something. We're just, we're just inviters. We just invite people. That's all we see here in John. They were just inviting people to come and see Jesus. We're pointers, uh, we invite, we bring, we're bringers. So be a bringer at Easter, come on, hashtag be a bringer. Here's the third thing is uh, we could be a witness to people about Jesus. We are witnesses. So we could put, we're pointers, we're bringers, we are a witness. A witness, you know, we could pray for people. A witness cares for people. It, it, shares, it shares. A good witness just tells the story of what they, what they saw and what they experienced. That's it. I'm just going to tell you what I saw. What did you see? Here's what I saw. I once was lost and now I'm found. Yeah. I just could tell you, I was, man, I was so much shame, so much condemnation, and Jesus took. I'm just going to tell you what I saw That's right. and what I experienced. You don't have to be a brilliant, a theologian, none of those things. You, you just just a witness of what you have seen in your life. That's, right. that's why everybody can be a witness. Yeah. I mean, you can just be a witness. People need a witness today. We, we need to be witnesses of what we've seen yeah. and what we've experienced. We are witnesses. Just, just, just come and see. Yeah. We bring people. We're, we point, we're pointers. We're a witness. And then the last thing is we live out a testimony. I like that. We are testimonies day in and day out. A testimony is where you just show the evidence. There's just an evidence. So there's an evidence of why we serve. Serving others is an evidence. Giving our finances to the local church is an evidence. We notice hurting people. We, we pick up on things that people are saying where they're hurting and they're going through something in their marriage and they're struggling with some addiction. We, we, we have the evidence. We, we recognize. We detect. And, and we track down those things and we, we tune into those things. Why? Because we're a testimony that we say, come and see. And, and the reason why we're a testimony and, and the reason why, because we live out that testimony. Yeah. Just a testimony of just, Lord, God could do great things. So let's be a pointer. Yeah. Let's be a bringer. Yeah. Don't have to be a pro. Yeah. I mean, just be a witness. All of us can be a testimony. Mm -hmm. Everyday missionaries. Just a testimony. God's called us to win lost people. Yeah. 
because Jesus wins lost people. And here's my prayer, is that we start doing it with more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do a light point just... confident pointing. We're confident in our pointing. We're confident in our bringing. We're confident in our witness. We're confident in our testimony. Why? Because we believe that in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit. There's going to be a great harvest of people. We're going to live out the mission. We have confidence in the gospel. Confidence. Because you know what? Here's what I know about Substance Church. You bring people here, they will get saved. People get saved in this church. Lost people find hope. So you can have confidence in bringing them to Easter because you know that Pastor Peter is going to preach a simple gospel message. And people are, and guess what's going to happen? The light's going to come on. And the glorious gospel is going to be presented through song and through children and through a foyer and through an experience. And people are just going to say, yes, how do you know that? Because it happened to me. And if God can save Dino Rizzo, who was lost, he can save anybody. And if he can save you, he can save anybody. You were lost. You were blind. He turned you around. He let people build a bridge to you. Jesus walked across the bridge and came to you. Guess what? He can do it from other people. That's why we can be a pointer. We can be a bringer. We can be an inviter. We can be a witness. We can be a testimony with confidence because whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Everybody. So God can do it. Amen. You know, I was born in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but my wife's from Louisiana. I've lived there most of my life. I'm going to tell you something. February 7, 2010, was one of the greatest days in the history of Louisiana. Man, it's when the Saints won the Super Bowl. Who? Who that? Who that nation? We went 43 years. Hello? We ain't the Vikings been in the Super Bowl every other day. We're the Aints. Not the Saints, the Aints. And I remember that. It was, amazing. it was a great year. So that year, um, I got to do two chapels. And when I went to go to the chapels, they brought me, they gave me jerseys. So this is some of my memorabilia from the Saints the year they won the Super Bowl. This is, oh, this, uh, this is a special jersey. Because, see, this one. Is autographed by Reggie Bush. Yeah, you don't have one of these, do you? I do. You don't have one of these. I, I have one of these, y'all. Sorry, I didn't mean to show that. But this is my prized possession. Drew Brees. Oh, MVP of the Super Bowl. Whoo, my prized possession. My prized memorabilia. Because, see, this one's a little special. They gave me this one. When I did a chapel at the Saints. Come on. Come on. See, what? oh, you don't have one of these, do you? There's only one of these. Here's what I love about this one. It got some stains on it right here. That's from some sausage. I said it's some sausage during the Super Bowl. I ain't never washed that, man. Y'all see that? You see that sausage? Give me some sausage on that bad boy. Come on, shout out to the big guys. Man, that was a great night. Delan, we had everybody over at our house. They had the houses packed. Man, we're playing the Colts. Peyton Manning. I'm just, we're, we're nervous. We're cooking. We're jambalaya, gumbo, sausage. It's, it's raining sausage at my house. It's alligator sausage and boudin. We're eating. I'm nervous. And, and we had one. I'm so nervous. We get to the half. Man, the Colts are winning 10 to 7 at the half. A little go. Ah! Man, the third quarter, man, he's marching down the field. We're, we're, we're losing. I mean, sausage. Oh, gosh. Ah! All of a sudden, fourth quarter, Peyton, Mar- he drops back. Man, he, oh, God. We're all delaying. Everybody's screaming. Ah! 
Peyton throws. Tracy Porter. Look at me. Y'all football fans, y'all need to be looking at me. I'm telling a good story right here. Don't be looking at each other. We'll get the song in a second. Where David Cook at? I need David out here trying to get y'all straight. So he drops back. Throws a pass. Tracy Porter comes out of nowhere, intercepts it, runs 73 yards. Touchdown! Saints win! Oh my gosh! Saints won the Super Bowl! Drew Brees is an MVP. And we get done that night. Delete, I'm like, Delete, I love you! We hug. <laughs> right, one of the greatest nights of our life. I mean, it, I mean, it was good having kids, but I'm going to tell you, it's all right. Man, everybody leaves the house. See y'all later, man. Love you. Love y'all. We go to bed. That's when the Super Bowl. Drew Brees, they lift the Lombardi trophy. Go to bed. What would you think if I woke up at 4 a.m.? Dylan, get up. We, we're going to watch a rerun. <laughs> Go heat up that sausage. Come on, we're going to watch it again. Y'all know what I'm talking We're going to watch it one more time. And we're in there watching it. And it's a repeat. We've always seen the outcome. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Can I have a little get better amen? I've always seen the outcome. But I'm watching it, and in the third quarter, oh, man, we're going to lose. Oh, oh, gosh, give me some sausage. I mean, whoa, fourth quarter, we're going to lose. And Peyton Manning going to come back and beat us. The lid would look at me like, you crazy? You lost your mind? It's a repeat. Yeah. It's a relay. Yeah. It already been determined. The outcome had already happened. Oh, come on, somebody in substance. They'd already lifted. They'd already lifted the trophy. There'd already been one crown. There was victory. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ went to the cross, and we could be a bringer, an inviter, a witness, and a testimony with confidence. Because in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit. And everybody who calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. And it doesn't matter what any devil in hell says. Jesus Christ is our victory. Clap your hands if you believe that. Hey! Hey! I said, hey! That's what we'll get to do, Pastor Peter, the next couple of days. Let's be bringers. Let's be inviters. Let's be a witness. Let's be a testament. And let's do it with confidence. Come on, let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. And I know in a few moments, Pastor Matt and Nate's going to come and Maybe even you're here today and you feel far from God. You feel, you feel away from God. But all across this room, we're going to give you an opportunity. Wherever you're at, just say yes to Jesus. But I want us to take 30 seconds. And I want us to pray that God is going to pour out His Spirit all across this region. and In our streets and in our trailer park and in our apartment complex and down in our neighborhoods and all across the college campuses. God, we pray right now. Come on, let's lift up our voice that when you pour out your spirit, God, we believe in the name of Jesus.